Monica Wood, I lie to you. The show where we sort the fact from the fiction. Let's meet tonight's panellists. On Jessie Mulligan's team tonight, you'll know her face from Shortland Street, but she's been auditioning in Hollywood recently, so it won't be long before we see her back on Shortland Street. <laughs> it's Fleur Seville. And he worked on Fair Go for 27 years, but had to leave when TVNZ introduced their new policy of only hiring people who look like Fleur Seville. It's Kevin Mill. <laughs> And on John Bridges' team tonight, just like she does on the Jono Project, by simply turning up tonight, she's doubled the quality of John's team, Shannon Ryan. <laughs> and if you crossed a favourite teddy bear with a slightly creepy homeless man and gave it a warped sense of humour, you would end up with Steve Wrigley. <laughs> to our first round this evening, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they have never seen the card before, so they have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the truth from the lies. And first up, Kevin Milne. I taught my dog how to answer the phone. <laughs> OK, so what does your dog say when he answers the phone? Hello, this is a dog? <laughs> Of course not. He barks. How, how, does, how he... does he bark? <laughs> 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 so then, is it hard to distinguish between your dog and a person working in a telecom call centre? <laughs> <laughs> My dog answers a lot quicker. <laughs> <laughs> and speaks better English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. How does he pick up the receiver with his little paws. No, he doesn't. No, you're, you're, putting, you're putting a whole human dimension on him. He doesn't use his paws at all. No, He you're... nudges the phone off the cradle with his nose. You're teaching your dog to answer the phone and you're telling me that I'm putting a human dimension on him. <laughs> does he do this when you're not at home? Yes. So how does he put the phone back on the cradle? He doesn't. <laughs> This makes his job easier uh, because it's only answering the call once a day until I get home. So was it so that your dog could then give you the information or so people didn't call for too long? Uh, no, I, uh, the dog can't give me the information because he cannot speak. You know, I'm just, I just think this is really unfair. I think if you get your dog to answer the phone at your house, you are not giving the people trying to call you a fair go. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I think you're reading too much into this. All I said was that I'd taught my dog to answer the phone. Mm. I haven't taught him to speak, to have conversations, to make appointments. <laughs> Sometimes I'll ring home while I'm away. Just and to hear his voice. Just to hear his voice. Oh. You see, Kevin, it seems to me the only benefit here is that when you get home, you can know either no one's called or at least one person. <laughs> well, my life isn't all that busy at the moment. <laughs> Do you leave a pen and pad next to the phone sort of optimistically every morning, just hoping one day you'll come back and they'll say, Kevin, your friend from uh, Touchdown Productions called. They want you to call back on this number. <laughs> I think it's a pity when people from your own team mock you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is John, a pity. you would never a... do that on your team, John. No, we would never. Uh, it's time to make a decision. Oh, dear. This is going to be really hard, isn't it, yeah. this decision? What do you think, Steve? I think it's true. I think it's true. I think it's true. Look, he looks like the kind of guy who goes, oh, I've got not much to do today. I'll teach the dog to answer the phone. I said to the production, it would be a good idea to get Steve Wrigley on the yeah. show. You're making me regret it. <laughs> so you say it's true. What do you think, Shannon? This is a really difficult one because it seems ridiculous, but possible. Oh, this is madness, Paul, but we're going to say it's true, it looks like. That is madness. They say you're telling the truth. Well, funnily enough, I am lying. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big surprise, wasn't it? Look, it's plausible that a dog could do that. Yes, it's a lie. So if you get a phone call in the middle of the night and all you hear is heavy breathing on the other end, it's not Kevin's dog. It's <laughs> probably Kevin. <laughs> Steve Wrigley, your turn. Yes, right. Um, I have wrestled Hulk Hogan and ended up in hospital. Wow. He looks like he's been in hospital once or twice. Mm. Yeah, but mental hospital. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was for a blow to the head. What was the, uh, the, the event? Uh, so I was working for a TV show and um, Di Henwood had gone over there to interview Hulk Hogan. 
and I was a huge fan. And after the interview finished, I said, hey Hulk, I've been a huge wrestling fan my whole life. Uh, would you do your patented leg drop finishing move on me? And he <laughs> did, but unfortunately, um, he kind of timed it wrong and I was also quite excited. So at the moment he did it, I kind of sat up a little bit <laughs> and the inside of his knee smacked into my head and pushed my nose. My nose started bleeding and I had to go to hospital. Steve, yes. obviously you know this patented move. Yep. Um, maybe John, you'd like to come what? around here. <laughs> yes. If you'd like to come here, John, because honestly, with Hulk it might be hard, with John it is going to be a pushover. Uh, come on, Steve, it's ludicrously dangerous and I'm not a professional wrestler. Exactly. Oh, well, that is Sunday evening viewing at its best. You are going to be so lucky to get out of here with a nose. Let's just say it's true and move on, shall no. we? John, you lie down. Oh, hell. And Steve, you practice saying less and doing more. OK, so here's the idea with the patented leg drop. Am I getting more is, money for this? <laughs> is I have to bend my knee so that it looks like the back of my knee is hitting you in the face, but actually what's happening is, is you, your face is safely finding its way into the arc. That is not... Yeah. If, my safe, if my face is in that arc, that is not safe. Do you know what the real danger here is? Is today I'm wearing my particularly tight jeans that don't give me a full range of leg motion. So in order to do this well, I will have to strip down to my safety underpants. <laughs> I don't think it's important that we do it well. So remember, John, aim your face for the crease. <laughs> well, so let's just say, so you're lying down. Steve, by, by the just way, do it. Paul, oh, you have no quiet. idea how much potential damage I could do to... None of us do, because okay, you've right. done nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Oh. And so then you're supposed oh. to finish like this, <laughs> right? You finish like this, and the guy's, like, just been fatally injured by the patented leg drop. But unfortunately, I sat up into the leg drop, right? And I sat up into the leg drop in such a way that my nose got, got hurt. So that's sort of... Oh. <laughs> Jesse, it's time for your turn, team to make a determination. Kevin? Well, he got his nose very close to his arc. Uh, <laughs> I'm inclined to go with this. It, 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 there was a commonality all the way through. You didn't change your story at any stage. No. It's true. Uh, Fleur? Yeah, I think it's true. Uh, we say it's true, Paul. They say it's true, Steve. Well, unfortunately, guys, it is a mess of 100% law. <laughs> What was that you just did to me, then? <laughs> to be honest, I have absolutely no idea. Oh, my God! Yeah, I feel so violated. Very good. Yes, it's a lie. The only thing Steve wrestles with is his conscience every time he charges for a comedy show. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Jesse's team are ahead, three points to two. Awesome. Join us after the break when we'll be playing This Is My. <laughs> Welcome back to Would I Lie to You. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Jesse's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection. It's up to John's team to spot who's telling the truth. Please welcome this week's special guest, Stuart. <laughs> welcome, Stuart. Great to have you on the programme. All right, Jesse, who is Stuart to you? This is Stuart. He was my acting tutor. <laughs> Kevin. Stuart and I used to work together for an airline. That was up till the point that I got fired for sending too many people to the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Fleur. This is Stuart, and he's the reason I didn't win $64,000 in lotto. All right, it couldn't be easier. John, where would you like to start? Jesse, you allege that Stuart is your acting tutor, or was your acting tutor? Was my acting tutor. How old were you? Um, mm. uh, second year university, maybe 19. And where was this? Waikato Polytech. I thought you said university. Sometimes when you're at university and you're doing stuff which involves a lot of brain power, you go to Polytech for a break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that was my break to go do some acting. What kind of acting skills did he teach you? He, he taught me this thing that you can do with your eyes 
but I never quite got the hang of it. Can you show us? Yeah, obviously so, not. Practice some. <laughs> I want to see him do it badly. Yep. Okay, so it's when you've got two people on the scene and you're talking to one of them and you close your eyes and then when you open them you're looking at the other person. It's just quite a, like a cool little acting trick. Let's try it now, Let's pretend it's... Like it's Fleur and Shannon? Fleur and Shannon, yeah. So I say, look, I love you. I really, really love you. And you can't get in the way of that. Hang on, wait a minute. So you paid oh, to go that... to a Polytech acting course and all that the guy did was go, blink slowly. <laughs> There was one of these little tricks that you have in your arsenal as an actor, as I'm sure. I'm sorry, would. mate, but You've... skeptical actress looks skeptical. No, oh, I just don't think he's a great actor. <laughs> I oh, think it was that... very impressive, just that you could pull that trick right out of your arsenal, like you. Could... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Fleur, could you r remind us who, what his name is first of all, Stuart, what he does? Stuart. Stuart, yes. Yeah, Stuart and my dad and. Uh, there's about six of us that have a, like a syndicate for um, Lotto. Every week we all go online and we all... It's just this thing that my family's always done. And uh, Stuart won once. <laughs> and uh, didn't email that day and so I lost out on it. So once right. you win, does everyone win a share of that money? Well, it's supposed to, yeah. He is kind of giving that look of like, I'm rich and you're not. <laughs> It's the same look Paul gives us every week. <laughs> <laughs> Do you all get to choose one number? Is that how it works? We all get to choose like eight or ten numbers each. But how that's too many numbers, isn't it? You're only allowed to... I don't know how... How many numbers do, are there all together to choose? You want to catch her out, but you don't know how a lot of works. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be so tricky. Oh, it's going to oh, be tricky. No. There are balls involved. So. There are balls involved. All right, it's time to move on. <laughs> okay, great. Let's, uh, let's... Kevin, can you remind us what Stuart is to you? We worked together for an airline up until the point where I got fired for sending too many people to the wrong place. <laughs> okay, so which airline were you working for? Uh, Air New Zealand. And when was this? 60... in the 60s. So what was your job exactly? What was your position? Uh, I was um, one of those people that if you ring up to, um, to get a trip somewhere... The people, <laughs> your dog the... answers the phone! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'd like to book a flight to Tahiti, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a reservations clerk, I, I suppose you would say. Why did you get fired? Because I sent too many people to the wrong place and those, <laughs> those people didn't like that. How do I you swear to God, the someone... dog said it was going to be in Honolulu. Yeah, they thought they were, yeah. How does that work, though? Because surely they would know when they get on a plane that says, we're going to Honolulu, and they're like, no, we're not supposed to go there. Back in those days, you had to turn up to the airport, then you put your ticket on the counter and say, I'm off to Auckland, and they say, no, you're not, you're going to Napier. I would believe this because that is the only way you could logically explain how people ended up living in Napier. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, you, didn't, Nathan, you didn't even exist until Kevin started working at Andy's. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, why were you particularly bad at this job? It was before computers and you used to have to learn a code that would be sent around the place, you know, to let people um, in various different cities know where people were going. And I would write the wrong code down. Most people ended up, because I knew Napier, most people, <laughs> most people ended up going to Napier. <laughs> What, did, what was Stuart's part in this whole f Napier fiasco? He was working with me in the office and he, continu he was good at the job and I was crap. <laughs> and uh, this was confirmed after six months when they asked me to go. John, time to make a call. What do you think, Shannon? Who do you think might be telling the truth? I think Kevin was good at playing up the whole, no, he's not mine, but I'm going to make up a story scenario, you, you know? think it was a double bluff? It could have been. <laughs> Mind you, the ice-cold rage that was pouring off Fleur as she described her family's hatred towards the man who so casually clasps his hands behind her <laughs> suggests to me also that maybe it could be Fleur, or Jesse, or Kevin. <sighs> I'll tell you what, though. I'll do, please. Definitely one of them. <laughs> I think, John, it's safe to say, this evening, you have the worst team you have ever had. <laughs> the team are no help. No, Paul, they're not. I'm going to just choose on my own. I believe that Stuart unsuccessfully taught Jesse to act. 
All right, you've made your call. Stuart, would you like to reveal your true identity? I'm Stuart, and I worked with Kevin at National Airways Corporation before he was sacked. <laughs> Yes, sending people to the wrong place at the wrong time. Ironically, if Kevin had been working for Jetstar, he would have been promoted. <laughs> Stuart, thank you very much. And after that round, Jesse's team are still ahead. Join us after the break for Quick Fire. To Would I Lie to You, our final round is quick fire, where our panellists lie not only through their teeth, but against the clock. And again, they don't know if they're about to read out a true fact about themselves or a made-up fact that they have never before seen in their lives. Fleur Seville, your turn. Alrighty. I got taken hostage by a hillbilly. <laughs> hostage by a hillbilly? Whereabouts? Uh, that would be a mountain town in America. A place called Idlewild. Talk us through what happened. You go into Idlewild. I go into Idlewild. I was producing a film. A uh, crazy gunman kind of man, hillbilly, uh, decided to basically say that I hadn't paid him enough money. For and what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> paid him enough. Uh, I was owed, owed him money. It's local hire. So uh, what? Hang he on. He was what? like a, a driver, a runner. Thank you. Okay. Specifics are good, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Um, and Don't chicken on how your lie is going. <laughs> How's my lie going? <laughs> are these specifics good? For, you'd be so bad in a courtroom. Like I, I know. I know. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the judge asked you a question. You go, yeah, it was Tuesday. Specifics are good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and then you turn to the jury and say, "How's that? Is that?" A... <laughs> he had a gun in his. Um... Wow. Americans do. That. Americans they have, have guns. them. Did you have to escape? Uh, yes, I did have to escape. I had to uh, go to the microwave and pretend I was putting some food in and call someone and someone had to come save me. That is a traditional way of escaping in a hostage situation. <laughs> I'm having a bit of trouble understanding the context of this kidnapping. So a guy goes, you owe me money, and you go, sorry, I don't have any on me to pay you right now. And then there's this moment where he goes, OK, do you want to come back to my place he for what is kidnap. definitely not a hostage situation? And you go, Sure, hillbilly with no teeth and gun. I'll follow you to your house. Hope you've got a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> what I actually think happened was, was you just had like a minor pay dispute with an employee. OK, no you... minor pay dispute involves a gun mm. and trying to sneak out by pretending to use a microwave phone thing. <laughs> Clearly you've never been in a pay dispute in Timaru. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, I think it's time for your team to make a call. What do you think, Steve? Uh, hot chicks never lie. <laughs> Just tell the truth. <laughs> truth. Love it. <laughs> what do you think, Shannon? It's a really elaborate way of getting away with um, saying that you went home with a hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to yeah. go with it's a lie. You think it's a lie? I think it's a lie. Which part don't you believe? The microwave part. That is true. Shannon does have a problem believing in microwaves. <laughs> she does stand in front of the microwave at our work going, You're not real! <laughs> Steve, could you just shut up? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I think I'm going to go with, this is a lie, Steve. Your uh, call, Paul. your call, John. They say you are lying. Well, uh, it was the truth. Oh. Hey. Oh. Yes, it's true. Actually, most hostage situations you can talk your way out of, but not with hillbillies. If you start talking aloud in English, they'll think you're showing off. <laughs> Kevin Mill. I drove uh, 30 kilometres on the motorway with a full wheelie bin on the tow bar. <laughs> I can believe it. How do, you, how do you attach the wheelie bin to the tow bar? You're, he's trying to work it out now. <laughs> um, the wheelie bin's got a handle at the end, doesn't it? Yep. And you jam that up against your tow bar. Just jam it in behind there. <laughs> Did you use a rope or anything to tie it or just jam it? Just jam it. <laughs> Is that your overall I'm a rolling? jamming man, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> you just, that just wrong. shove it. Yeah. Did that feel wrong? That felt, like <laughs> like, yep. felt like your uncle came round and was talking about the hip-hop and the kids were like... <laughs> It didn't feel that great saying it, to be honest, Lee Jones. <laughs> was it actually like, did you actually deliberately attach it to the back of the car, or was it just sort of a moment of like... No, I actually intentionally put it on the back 
to take it out to the road instead of having to pull it out because we've got a long drive. Where were you going? Uh, I he was going. Know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was either going to Ortaki or Levin. Why? <laughs> and when you got back, did you tell your wife that you've been to Levin and she said, mm, where have you really been? <laughs> Did you secure the lid of the wheelie bin? Or was it just kind of spewing garbage around? <laughs> I, I was just... Um, well, if it was jammed it, down, you wouldn't have been able to it, see it. it. You don't see it. You can't see it around behind um, a, uh, a Jaguar. All right. <laughs> John, I don't want to either help or hinder you here. Oh, but really? I actually live in a place where people do attach the wheelie bins to the back of their car to take them out. Mm. So this is just is this just to get it to the end of the driveway? Well, if you've got a long driveway, How doesn't it make sense? How much more convenient do they need? They've already put wheels on the wheelie bin. <laughs> How lazy are you that you're, like, pushing this? As a, I'd hate for you to be looking after an invalid in a wheelchair. Clearly. <laughs> Don't take it off. Oh, we'll just lash him to the back of the Porsche and go for a hoot. <laughs> I would attach the wheelie bin to the back of the wheelchair and say, take the rubber out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Oh. <laughs> I want it to be true. Does that help? What do you think, Steve? I reckon much like the wheelie bin, this is a load of rubbish. Very good. <laughs> it's not true at all. Well, let's take it to the end of the driveway. What do you think, Shannon? I think because he jammed it on rather than attaching it, there's no way it could have made it 30 kilometres, so I'm going to say it's a lie. Paul, we think it's a lie. An interesting answer. They say it's a lie. Uh, yeah. It is true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yes, it's absolutely true. When you get to Kevin's age, you do get a bit forgetful. Where did I put my glasses? What's my phone number? When did I start wearing women's clothing? <laughs> What's it, so irritating, Paul, about this is that it is contained in the first page of my book, which obviously none of you have read. <laughs> and that sound signals the end of the show, and I can reveal that Jesse's team have won with seven points. Well done, team. <laughs> of course, it's not just a team game and my individual liar of the week is Kevin Milne, because during the break, he demanded we give it to him as a result of the Consumer Guarantees Act. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, New Zealand On Air. I never knew lying could be such fun.